Welcome back to Logic. I'm Tom. Today we're going to talk about what an argument is. Now, um, if you look at our text, they have a pretty good example of something that we commonly call an argument, but is not the kind of argument that we will be discussing in this course. Um, let me go ahead and read this. Um, Sally says, abortion is morally wrong and those who think otherwise are seeking to justify murder. Bob, abortion is not morally wrong and those who think so are right-wing bigots who are seeking to impose their narrow-minded views on all the rest of us. And there's exclamation points at the end of both of those sentences. Typically, when we talk about an argument, we mean a heated discussion between two individuals. Um, in logic, we have a more technical notion of an argument. Um, specifically, what we will be talking about is an argument in terms of a series of statements, one of which follows from the others, the one that follows is the conclusion and the others are the premises, okay? Um, there's a couple of different things about this that are really important and I'm gonna cover a couple of them right now. Um, but I also wanna say a little bit more about what an argument is in the sense of um, in this class when we're talking in logic. Um, so here's an example of an argument. All fish have gills. This creature is a fish. Therefore, this creature has gills, right? Um, couple things to mention about this. One is that um, there's a very tight logical connection between the statements, right? Um, um, they're not loosely connected or just randomly related. Um, if you think that fish have gills and some creature is a fish, then you think that creature has gills. Um, there's kind of no wiggle room there. Um, the other thing to mention is that this is not what we usually think of when we talk about an argument. Um, one way to think about this is that we will be talking about inferences and the term inferences might convey a little bit more the, the tight logical connection that we're trying to get at and also how it differs from arguments. Um, in the way that we tend to think about them as just like a spat between two people. Um, but that is an argument. Um, it has two statements here, or, or has three statements in total. Um, all fish have gills. This creature is a fish. This creature has gills. Um, there are two, the first two are premises and the last one is the conclusion, right? Um, another example of an argument is the store is 1.2 miles away. I walked to the store, thus I walked 1.2 miles. Um, we make inferences like this all the time. In fact, we make inferences like this oftentimes without thinking about it much, which is kind of ironic. Um, uh, this is a, a good inference. Right, and it is an argument. We have um, a series of statements. One of them follows from the other. There is a lot tight logical connection between them. Um, but we do um, make these kinds of inferences in our thought all the time, right? I might be trying to tally up how much um, walking I did for um, health purposes or whatever and realize, oh, I walked to the store and then Google it real quick, do Google Maps and figure out, oh, it's 1.2 miles so I can add that up and I'm not, not even really think about it explicitly. Um, a lot of this reasoning is implicit. Now, um, the problem with this reasoning being implicit is that it makes it easy for us to miss inferences or to make bad inferences, right? Um, make jumps from one statement to another. And so when we're looking at arguments in this course, um, we will be taking a very analytic and focused look at um, very simple inferences. So we can really get clear about when inferences are good and when they're bad and what are specifically the rules that we're using to get from one statement to another. Um, so let me um, give one more example of how we oftentimes make certain jumps. Um, okay, here's an inference I wanna make. 
Armando is pro-life and is a staunch advocate for gun rights. Therefore, Armando is a Republican. So we might think that this is a reasonable inference to make, um, but it actually doesn't follow, right? Um, they're related ideas, um, but one does not really entail um, that the other one is true. Um, it's, it's much too loose of an inference. So for example, it might not follow because Armando identifies as a, a libertarian, or maybe Armando thinks of himself as a Democrat, but just parts ways with the party with these two specific um, issues. Or um, maybe Armando is not in the United States, right? You know, maybe he has these kinds of opinions, but lives in a country that has a one party system, or maybe um, uh, they just have different parties, right? Labor party or something like this, right? Um, so it's just not a good inference to make. And this is the kind of inference that we're apt to make pretty easily. Um, and, you know, I point it out because for this course, we will be taking a much more, much slower look at the way we reason, a much tighter look at the way we reason and, um, and kind of leave no real room for error. That's the kind of, um, what would you say? orientation we're going to have towards language and, and logic and the inferences and reasoning we use. So now another really important piece here that I want to highlight, which is somewhat related, um, is that part of our definition of an argument is that only statements factor into an argument. Statements are one kind of linguistic entity. There are other kinds that really um, uh, come out like sentences, right? Um, so uh, exclamations, demands, imperatives, questions, these are all things that are not statements. So let me give an example here. Um, let's say I say, save the earth. What are you, a whale killer, right? Um, that's not an argument. That's an exclamation, save the earth, and a question, what are you a whale killer? Um, neither of them uh, state a position, and neither of those statements support a position, right? The exclamation and the question is, they're rhetorical devices, and they, we use these oftentimes to be persuasive. Um, but strictly speaking, they do not help advance a position. So um, the reason why statements are so important is that they're truth evaluable, right? Questions, exclamations, demands, these things are not truth evaluable, meaning the category of true and false does not apply to them. If I say shut the window, that's neither true or false. It's an instruction about what you should do. Right, um, and same, same with question, right? I'm just asking, I'm not stating it, that anything is the case. Um, and so this is important because you want to be able to have true statements to support your arguments. So for example, if I claim that um, with global warming, Colorado will be three degrees warmer on average than it is um, now in five years. Um, that seems like a pretty drastic claim. So you might think, well, what is that based on? Is the research that you're using um, actually true and accurate, right? But if that position, um, my claim about the, the global warming here is based only with on rhetorical questions and I only give exclamations like save the earth and, and whatnot, um, then my position is not actually based on something that can be true, right? Those are not even truth valuable. So it doesn't seem like my position is really supported at all. Um, the other side to this, something to, to mention here is exclamations and questions also cannot be false, right? They're not truth valuable at all. Um, which makes them somewhat um, handy as rhetorical devices, right? Um, it's kind of part of the reason why I think a lot of people do use them. 
But in any case, when we're talking about logic, we're going to be talking about arguments that are a series of statements with premises and conclusion. Um, and uh, we're going to be looking at the way in which the conclusion follows from the premises. And we need to maintain a certain sensitivity to this idea that we're dealing with only statements. Um, and this helps us moving forward when we look at actual arguments to be able to kind of tease out the real meat and potatoes of that argument. And um, so the other thing for this unit is to look at the um, indicator words. Those can be really helpful. Um, I'm not gonna go over them here. Um, they have a pretty good chart and one of the exercises has uh, deals with them a little bit. So um, enjoy that and I will talk with you soon. Thanks.